looks like everyone's covered. Okay, cool. Well, let's hop into the platform settings and uh, talk about some things that you guys might have not caught uh, that are very, very nice. So if we wanted to get to the platform settings on the mobile platform, there's two places to do it. First, in the dashboard tab, there's, and again, this is for iOS right now, you can go to the app settings, tap on app settings here, and then you will be automatically taken to the platform settings. Right now, I'm gonna show you the second way instead of tapping that. If you go back to your account management section or account balances area by tapping on your account in the top left, and then go down here to this gear icon, that is also another way to get to the platform settings. So if we tap on that settings button in the bottom left, we get taken to our settings here. So what you see here is gonna be dependent on what version of the app you're on and device type, but in the general section at the top. So I just tapped on uh, general here under settings. So general, you can set up your logout timer when how, you know, if you want the platform to auto log you out after a certain period, you can also turn on and off face ID or um, finger scans. We also have the ability to display a New York time, especially, you know, if you're an uh, international user or not on a US time zone. And then something specific to, you know, those that might be a little hard seeing or, you know, have trouble seeing some of the figures on the platform, we do have a nice light mode available. So just to kind of show it off real quick, it is quite, uh, quite nice. Uh, it's real, real, real crisp. If you're having trouble uh, navigating the trade tab or any pieces of the platform, it's, it's definitely uh, a nicer way to, to view and trade. So awesome. Let's go back into the settings there real quick. So that's our light mode. I'm just going to switch it back for now. Go back to dark. Just tap it on these two there to switch between light and dark. And then also something that I think um, for the most part, like unless you don't want more columns, I would definitely suggest just toggling compact table layout. This essentially just kind of squeezes together the columns in the positions tab and in the watch list and history tab. So if you're in landscape mode or in portrait, you know, you're going to get just a little more space for additional data columns. Otherwise, uh, you might see a few less columns on the platform and have to scroll between the pages. So those are kind of the major settings there under general. Also under accounts here, this is where you can actually see, and uh, the question came up earlier as well as like, hey, uh, how do I close an account? If you either want to close an account or you don't want a certain account to show up on the platform anymore when you're looking to open trades or um, going through account management, under this account settings area, you can actually select which accounts are visible by checking on this check mark right here. So if you get on those check marks, um, right now we're viewing both accounts, but you can unselect that and it will no longer show. It's also talking about privacy mode. The three dots, or you see now our account numbers are dotted out, the account name and numbers dotted out. If you want to turn on privacy mode, you can toggle that there. And then lastly, there's also, also ETF equivalent deltas. So we have some resources in our help center you can check out uh, to learn more on ETF equivalent delta, but that's how you can turn it on. And then going through the rest of the settings here, just a couple of things. The trade section, this is where you can mess around with the different overlays. So uh, Donald, you're asking, hey, how do I show the expected move strip in the table mode view? You either can click on the settings gear icon within the table view or within our trade settings here as well under price range overlay. That's where you go price range overlay and then make sure that's set to expected move. Uh, you might have none selected right now, which means it's just blank, or there's also a daily high low marker too. But personally, I just like the expected move and I think it gets the, the most valuable information. So that's how you can add in the expected move to your trade table in the settings. Lastly, uh, we just have some other settings about showing uh, positions that you have open or showing working orders on the trade tab. So you saw those little buttons on the trade table that showed our working order or if we had an open position. So you could toggle those on and off to display or not based on your desired settings. Uh, and then in trade defaults here, 
there's just some general stuff about, hey, you know, um, I want to set up orders based on a default time and force or order type. Um, also in the stock orders, option orders or futures orders, this is where you can set some defaults in terms of, Hey, when I queue up a stock order, I want to default to one share or maybe, you know, hundred shares. And in this case, I actually have my increment at uh, one, two, maybe I want to up it to 15. So every time I click the arrow, it increases by 15 shares. So based on your sizing, you can kind of mess around with the default order quantities, but I generally just set them all to one. And I like to just type in the quantity after the fact. You can also set some default bracket order percentages in this window. And what's really nice is that any of the settings that you end up changing here should also uh, apply on the desktop and web platform too. In terms of the price overlay and a couple of those features might not be one-to-one -one exactly, but in terms of default order quantity and a lot of those settings, those will populate on the other side too. So that's our trade setting section. And then to wrap things up in the settings here, we also have the chart tab. Uh, something I think a lot of you really like is that when you're in the chart settings here, the simplified chart controls are nice if you just like setting it up on a day, month, year chart. Uh, you can toggle that back to one of our older versions of the chart. But uh, personally, if you have a default time interval and range that you like to view every single time, then definitely hop in here and set that default interval interval and time frame. That way, when you go back into your chart anytime later, it's going to be to your default settings. So super nice stuff there. Notifications is just stuff on sound and push notifications. And then lastly, we also have the about section here where you can check out, hey, what uh, what version am I currently on? Am I on the most recent version? And then if you're ever curious, like, hey, I'm having issues with quotes or um, app status, just double check, hop in settings and see, hey, am I connected to quotes and markets and all this other stuff? Or are there some issues? Generally, if you run into issues, try resetting the app um, you know, clearing out the app and resetting it. That usually does the trick. Um, but you know, it kind of depends on case by case and you can reach out to support for help.